Thank you, Paul. Good morning, everyone. How are we doing today? All right, it's 8.30 in the morning. Uh, I know I saw a couple of you at the back blackjack table about 3 a.m., so you must be doing pretty, but get your coffee. You're stoked for day number two, all right? So let's talk about some training, all right? So this is my first time attending this conference as ALPA president. As Paul indicated, I was here in 2015 as the first vice president, and it was truly an amazing experience for me. I had never seen the Archie League banquet, and to see all those people there and hear some of the stories of the air traffic controllers, there was one in particular where a pilot who only had a private pilot license got into the goo and couldn't figure out how to get down, and one of the uh, one of the controllers actually guided him and helped him. He was a pilot himself, guided him down. It was so cool to see them both there that night and, and get that award. So it was really incredible. So, um, you know, NACA has, it, I'm, I'm always so impressed with NACA because you have such a strong member presence, enthusiasm, and energy is just unbelievable. But, but before I begin, let me just thank NACA President Paul Rinaldi and Executive uh, Vice President Trish Gilbert for all that you do for aviation safety and aviation labor. And I'm honored to join you today, and I'd like to spend a few minutes to talk to you all about the life-saving value of training. That's the theme, right? For both airline pilots and air traffic controllers. Now, I'm gonna say up front, <clears throat> the Airline Pilots Association spends over 7,000 hours doing training every year. That's a remarkable number. I'll tell you how we do that, and I'll tell you why we do that. Um, and that's in addition to what we get out of our companies, right, for our normal training. So, Gene Cernan, I don't know if you all know him and remember him, a Navy A-4 pilot, and the last man to walk on the moon said, prepare for the unknown, the une unexpected, and the inconceivable. And sharing experiences can help us prepare and he said that after 50 years of flying, that he's still learning every time he flies. And folks, pilots say that all the time. Gene was right. Airline pilots are constantly learning, training, drilling, and being coached. We are truly trained for life. We learn everywhere. We treat every situation as an opportunity for knowledge transfer. We gain valuable information in formal classrooms, but we also regard the flight deck as a classroom. And we do more to understand how we can improve safety and efficiency through flight debriefs, crew room conversations, and online resources. We also learn from everyone. We learn from the most experienced veterans who are always willing to share their, their stories and experiences, but also create opportunities to seek knowledge from brand new aviators. Now, pilots start with the mindset that everyone involved in airlines operations is connected through the heart, our passion for aviation and safety, and our passion for our profession. I believe that one of ALPA's greatest strengths is that we create a space where pilots and other industry stakeholders with incredibly diverse backgrounds and experience discover that we are all connected. From there, we learn together. Now, as Gene Cernan quotes implies, we can't allow decades of previous experience to mean that we stop learning. I think there's a human tendency that once you feel like you've paid your dues and you've learned something, your cup is full and you're not willing to you know, go any further. But that's, that's not the mentality that we're looking for here. Through the wisdom of our years, we grow to understand that a willingness to learn doesn't detract from the hard work and sacrifices we've made to get where we are today in our careers. And trust me, like each of you, I know that hard work and sacrifice that goes into my profession, that goes into your profession. Just to become an airline pilot, for instance, we need an ATP, the Airline Transport Pilot Rating, or a restricted ATP certificate. After earning private commercial pilot certificates, this is in addition to an instrument rating, a multi-engine rating, and quite possibly, most of us, a flight instructor rating. Then we build hours. Right? We gotta get out there and fly as charter or corporate pilots or flight instructors. Now, if you became a pilot in the military as I did, you gained academic training and flight experience under constant, trust me, constant evaluation. And while becoming an airline pilot requires years of study and training, you experience 
truthfully, only whets our appetite for more. We have the need for speed, as they say. We want to excel. We had a lot of competition in, in the military and being a military pilot, so, but we always were excited about new opportunities to demonstrate new capabilities. So on the flight deck, we're trained and coached as a routine part of our jobs. It happens all the time. We do uh, discussions, pre-briefs, uh, briefs during the, the flight itself, and then after the flight is complete, we go through a debriefing. <clears throat> for those of us who have flown for decades, our accomplishment does not discourage us from learning new things. In fact, quite the opposite. Through our experience, we recognize the benefits of receiving and accepting constructive feedback. That is the key. Constructive feedback. FAA, are you listening? <laughs> you ha it has to be constructive, all right? Uh, both pilots and controllers train to be proficient so that we can depend on our skills when we need to react to the unknown, the unexpected, or the inconceivable. We know that mitigating risk is about more than proficiency. It is about preparedness. By learning from others who share our passion for aviation safety, we train for life. Now let me tell you how we do that. We train for life through formal programs. Throughout our history, ALPA has worked with regulators and airlines across the industry to develop and maintain dynamic and responsive training programs. The programs reflect emerging, tech, emerging technology while at the same time ensuring pilots maintain the strongest possible manual pilot flying skills. You look at the rest of the world, folks, <clears throat> they don't train like we train here in the United States. There are, there's a certificate out there, I don't know if you're familiar with it, uh, called the Multi-Crew Pilot License. A person could have as little as 240 hours sitting in the right seat of a wide-body aircraft only 30 to 40 hours of which is in a real airplane. The rest is in a simulator. That is not what we do here. That's why constant feedback on our performance is, is, is throughout our careers is so important. In fact, we have a structure that's actually built around that feedback, okay? That structure determines its nature and frequency through activities such as recurrent training and programs such as line operation safety audits. In fact, in addition, we learn from random flight deck checks given by the airline and the FAA. And as a line check airman myself, I'll tell you right up front, some pilots initially uh, viewed that as punishment, all right? Constant, constant evaluation. But let me tell you, things have changed. The aviators who get the most out of that experience are those who adopt a mindset of openness and willingness to learn. They seize the opportunity to advance their performance. Now, we also train for life by learning from our industry's experience. Following a series of aviation accidents, the FAA, the airlines, and ALPA work together to develop the Advanced Qualification Program, or AQP, as an alternative means of regulatory compliance for airline training. Provided the AQP alternative is as safe or safer, that's the key, as safe or safer, than the traditional requirement, the program allows a more creative approach and response to training regulations. In fact, the FAA found that AQP actually encouraged participants to actually exceed the standards. It's been a very successful program. Airline pilots also learn through Crew Resource Management, or CRM, uh, which is a safety improvement that also emerged from accidents uh, that have happened in the past. CRM helps pilots enhance the cognitive and the interpersonal skills needed to manage a flight. Part of leadership, right? Leading a crew. Thanks to advancements in CRM, we have a pilot flying and a pilot monitoring on the flight deck at all times. And newsflash, everybody in this room, when we have an emergency, you're part of our crew. You're in it. You're in it with us. So keep that in mind all times. Information transmission takes place in a positive and proactive way and helps create a shared mental model with a focus on safety. Now, as Paul Rinaldi noted in a recent NATCA blog, remembering United Airlines Captain Al Haynes, and this is written everywhere around this room, every day is a training day. Now, and many of us recall that in 1989, Haynes demonstrated exceptional CRM and leadership skills while piloting 
United Flight 232 during a serious engine failure. And I'll just say this, given the, the problem that he was faced with that day and the help that he called up to the cockpit to try to manage it, let's just say the gravity of the situation, that man saved a lot of lives that day. Um, CRM also applies to two or more pilots who must be present on the flight deck to ensure safety. But it also applies to interactions with pilots on other aircraft as well as with air traffic controllers. In another example, in its investigation of Kogan Flight 3407 near Buffalo, New York, the National Transportation Safety Board noted the pilot's lack of experience. That's why we ended up with new first officer qualification rules after that particular accident. There were actually four accidents that led up to that. Took a look at ourselves and realized how important experiential learning and experience in flight is to safety. Now, when at the direction of Congress, the FAA and Colgan uh, looked at the Colgan accident and 30 others, it found that shortcomings in airline pilot qualifications and training had played a role in all of them. The regulations that resulted improved the training for pilots that pilots receive, among other things, flying in adverse weather and icing, recognizing and recovering from upsets and stalls, and mentoring other crew members. The rules also updated pilot certificate and type rating requirements. And I will tell you this, folks, with the advent of the commercial air safety team and the work that they've done in the past with an extreme data collection effort through the ASIAS program that we'll get into here in a little bit, we have moved over two thirds of the world's population in metal tubes in the lowest stratosphere without a single fatality without a single vote. That is freaking remarkable given the form of transportation. There is nothing to even come close to it. Railroads, forget about it. Highways, forget about it. Think about what we do, what you do every day. You make that happen, all right? You're, we're partners in this. That is an extraordinary achievement. So needless to say, ALPA strongly supports these life-saving training programs. Um, well, since we're talking about SIAS, airline pilots train for life through data. The Harvard Business Review describes learning agility as a capacity for rapid and continuous learning from experience. It explains that agile learners make connections across experiences, right? They value and derive satisfaction from the process of learning itself. Learning is, isn't punishment, all right? It's, expanding ourselves, it's making ourselves bigger, it's understanding what we do, it's becoming, as a pilot, the master of our machines. As we automate, this is one of my big issues, okay? Some people say, as we automate, we need less training. Negative, wrong. Used to be, um, you know, we had airplanes that had federated systems, you know, that basically all the separate instruments were not integrated altogether. Um, and now we have integrated ones, right, where the computer's basically integrating all this information. Well you know what, you need to know what's going on there. You need to understand how the machine is processing information. So more training, not less. And I believe that air traffic controllers and potties, they embody all these traits in the satisfaction we draw from learning and applying, more importantly, applying what we learn. So as a result, we contribute to a philosophy of learning across the aviation industry. We have a very complex Aviation ecosystem, lots of moving parts, everybody working together for the single solitary goal of safety. For example, our industry is moving beyond the forensic tombstone approach to safety in which improvements only occurred after an accident happened and then they would say, okay, why'd that happen, All right? Today we embrace a more risk predictive model and that data collection helps us learn about the connections across those experiences to predict risk and prevent tragedies. One of our industry's strongest safety tools in this endeavor is voluntary, non-punitive safety reporting programs. You all know what they are. ALP is deeply invested in these programs that allow pilots, controllers, mechanics, and other aviation uh, professionals who are on the front line of daily operations to report safety hazards without fear of disciplinary action. It's crucial, and as we have less and less accidents, that information coming from that data stream is even more important. We need to know the choke points, right? So the Commercial Air Safety Team and the Aviation Safety Information Analysis and Sharing Program, or SIAS, 
both use information gathered through such voluntary efforts. Using the Aviation Safety Action Program, or ASAP, and the ATSAP, the Air Traffic Safety Action Program, and other resources, we now identify and predict safety risks in advance. Risk predictive, amazing. We make a proactive effort to mitigate them through training and other accidents before accidents can occur. So we take what we learn there and we integrate that into our system. It completes the loop, our training loop. So in addition, pilots train for life by learning from each other, from our peers. And one way that airline pilots learn from our colleagues is just information transfers through PIREPS. That's the one you see most often. Most often. As everyone in this room knows, Pilots voluntarily submit information to help other pilots learn about operating conditions that we may be experiencing. And once we radio in the PIREP, each of you helps us get this information about weather hazards or other flight conditions to our fellow colleagues. The safety value of PIREPs is not only relevant to flights at specific locations, it also helps us improve safety more broadly. These reports are sometimes our only source for the meteorological data and flight conditions that we discover on each flight. Now, at its 2016 forum on the subject, the National Transportation Safety Board encouraged pilots to pay it forward through PIREPs, and we certainly do. Yeah. Airline pilots learn from our peers in other ways as well. On every flight, flight deck and cabin crew members monitor and evaluate each other while on duty. That's part of the CRM process. In addition, ALPA's globally respected professional standard programs help us work together to resolve professional or ethical challenges. Issues such as personality conflicts and differences in flying are quickly and effectively addressed. I have to smile when I say that too, because I came up in the Marine Corps and early years before we did CRM, before we, you know, everybody used to say it was the hot tub, you know, and all these kind of things, we're gonna get to know one another. I remember just sit there, don't touch anything except the gear handle until I tell you to do it. So, I mean, that's literally how it was in the old days. The captain was, was the god, right? But now we know that that obviously doesn't work very well. So, pilots and air traffic controllers have worked together to build NACA's professional standards bench. We work together on that a lot. So, it's really been a great experience, mutually beneficial. Now, pilots also, we mentor each other, especially our newest aviators. And I'm proud to say that ALPA has professional development and mentoring programs at 11 university campuses across the United States. We also conduct mentoring work at more than a dozen universities in the United States and Canada. We train for life by finding new and better ways to learn. Through human factors, and I think you talked a little bit about that yesterday, through human factors and training, we not only learn about training, we learn about ourselves. We learn how we learn. We learn about some of the filters that get in the way sometimes. So ALPA works through our air safety organization over 450 dedicated pilots, specific disciplines, working with a full-time engineering and aircraft, uh, sa air safety department, the largest non-governmental safety organization in the world. Led by our dear friend of mine, first vice president, United Captain Bob Fox, and through the International Federation of Airline Pilots Associations, or IFALPA, that's our international contingent which has, by the way, uh, observer status into ICAO, the International Civil Aviation Organization. And, and so we, we're doing that to ensure that human factors are at the forefront of how we train. Now, in areas from threat and error management to flight deck communications, ALPA is teaming with our industry partners to look at new ways how, especially, now here's, here's a really key, and, and this has really been a big focus for us, how current and future aviation workers and this is our thing, uh, learning about the future of work, um, how their life of experiences affect the way they train and the way they learn. We're asking questions like, how does growing up using smartphones influence how individuals learn? I know when we first switched from paper books and manuals to computers, it's still kind of a little, I'm kind of old school, I like to see the manual. I want to see why they put certain things in certain places in the manual. And it's hard to gather that information from scrolling on your computer. It's a, it's a difficult thing. But it, just the way something is composed like that tells you a lot about the system. So as has been the case since our union's earliest days, ALPA is deeply involved in using technology and automation as tools 
to enhance safety. Folks, I've seen, again, automation issue, right? And we're dealing with that with the Boeing 730 Max, 737 MAX, but the, I've seen technology that works to help me do my job, and I've seen technology that I have to figure out how to work around it and how to accommodate to it, and that's not good technology, right? So the only way to do that is to have experience, to be an experienced aviator. Um, I mentioned that MPL, the multi-crew pilot license with the 240 hours. Do you want somebody who's trained only to rely on the automation? Uh, or do you want somebody who, I know when something happens, uh, automation does fail, by the way. <laughs> Fails all the time, right? Um, I, I de-automate the airplane, and I'm in happy land. I am where I belong. I, I have an airplane in my hand, and everything is, everything is good again, all right? You have to have that skill. You have to have that comfort level, and that's the part that concerns me the most. And that's why I wrote a letter to the Secretary General of uh, ICAO to do an examination of pilot and training standards globally. All right? They need to take a look at that. So, um, At the same time that we're keenly aware that a pilot's manual flying skills, of course, must remain the most important thing, right? You've got to be able to fly an airplane, obviously. Now, on the flight deck, pilots start with our technical proficiency. Folks, that's a given. That's what I'm saying. That should be the given. You either can fly, you're an aviator, or you're not. Right? You're not a platform operator. Right? Bad things happen when you try to do that. We then use crew input to make decisions based on techniques learned through training. Now, while technology and automation have important roles, here's the key. No technology adapts like a well-trained, experienced, well-rested pilot and air traffic controller. Bottom line, all right? We want that human element. I want you watching me, all right? Guiding me, dot period. As professionals, our training and proficiency allow us to adapt quickly in unplanned and sometimes extraordinary circumstances. We know from the NACA Archie League Medal of Safety Awards and our own ALPA Superior Airmanship Award that the result saves lives. Now, as a member of the AFL-CIO Commission on the Future of Work and Unions, I am honored to partner with your president, Paul Rinaldi, who has done an important work as the Transportation Sector Commission Chairman. Working under Paul's steady leadership, I've spearheaded ALPA's effort to view these issues through a much broader lens the dignity of work. Now, <clears throat> I want to talk about that just for a second. I'm going to go off script here a little bit. I mean by dignity of work, right? What's the first thing when you meet somebody socially or professionally at a party or whatever that they typically ask you? It isn't typically what you did on vacation, what you do to play. They ask you what you do. Because what you do is a source of self-identity, self-esteem, your place in society, um, you know, philo philosophers throughout the ages have talked about the importance of work to human beings, right? They don't talk about play, they talk about work. And so, I'll get into this in a little bit, but that's what disturbed me so much about the shutdown and what you all had to go through. So, with that in mind, we are cognizant and remain, uh, remind influencers, rather, at every level of government and in industry of the essential role that collective labor agreements play in the creating of proactive safety cultures. This is embedded in our contracts, folks. No one, it, no one escapes from that responsibility. It's in writing. And I contend that labor agreements are one of the strong reasons why we are as safe as we are. I don't know if you know, but in the airline industry, unionism is extremely dense, over 90-something percent unionized. Compare that, and we have the, right, the Railway Labor Act. Now, on the other side of the fence, right, the National um, Labor Relations Board, the Lab National Labor Relations Act, the amount, union participation went from a high of about 35 to 40 percent down to about 7 percent now. Right? That's a pretty big drop. And we're working to reverse that, but it just goes to show you the uniqueness of what we do and how important contracts are to us. So, finally, we train for life for the future of aviation safety. David Peterson, the director of Google Center of Expertise 
leadership development, and executive coaching is quoted in the Harvard Business Review as saying, staying within your comfort zone is a good way to prepare for today, but it is a terrible way to prepare for tomorrow, and that is true. To sustain our success in aviation safety in the face of future demand, lives literally depend on pilots and controllers training to use new technology and learn new capabilities, right? Learn how to use those new capabilities. In addition to supporting more passengers and freight in the future, the United States also needs to continue to safely integrate commercial space operations, of which ALPA is very involved, unmanned aerial systems, UAS, and other, entrance, other new entrants into our airspace system. We have a lot of challenges to face. To do all this, we cannot allow ourselves to be limited to what we know now. We must embrace new thinking, new ways of doing this better. So, as we develop new policies and procedures to integrate these operations, we know from Six Sigma and the legendary Gordon Graham, I don't know if you've ever heard him speak, pretty impressive man, that training to decrease variations in our procedures will help us reduce errors and increase efficiency. NACA and each of you are our partners in this process of training for life. Few of our passengers or cargo shippers recognize the level of qualification, the intense training, the constant evaluation that you and I go through on a daily basis. Um, but I always remind them anyway. But pilots and air traffic controllers understand that commitment. We stand together in our passion for unionism and our passion for safety. Now, Paul, you mentioned this. During the last government shutdown, I was proud to stand with your president, Paul Rinaldi, at the Stop the Shutdown rally. Together, we alerted the nation to the needless risk the shutdown posed to the safety, the security, and the efficiency of our national airspace system. That system we all work so hard to make as safe as it is today. It was an honor to meet so many controllers in person at Washington National and Dulles as ALPA members expressed our support while you were asked to do your jobs without pay, which in my view was unconscionable. Um, I have to ask myself if this is America sometimes because I, that is just so anathema to me. I just don't understand how, how that goes down. But, you know, as dedicated professional, you and other aviation workers continued to provide your life-saving life services during that shutdown. I just want to say one thing. And I watch, I'm an old poli-sci major, I, I watch a lot of shows on TV, all the political shows, and I hear that word patriot bandied about a lot lately, about what that means. I went up in the towers, I saw you all working diligently, I saw smiles on your face, I didn't hear one complaint, right? You buckled down, you did your job. So in my view, you're the true patriots. You kept us safe, you brought us home, all while going to work, making, having to make the Sophie's choice of whether to sleep in your car or pay the toll so you can make a meet with your families. No one should have to do that in America, especially people that provide a service that you do. So I thank you for that. I thank you for that level of professionalism. That was just one example of the extraordinary commitment that you at NACA demonstrate every day, along with each of you to safe, that safely guide more than 44,000 flights that transit the U.S. national airspace every single day. Pretty remarkable. It's this commitment, really, it's, it is your commitment that sets air traffic controllers apart. And it's the same pledge that makes air travel the safest mode of transportation known to man. Now, I'll make you a promise. You can expect that same dedication from me and from ALPA to continue in the future. We intend to stand shoulder to shoulder with you with one voice to say no to any future government shutdowns. It just doesn't make sense. It isn't right on every level, especially on the human level. So you can, be, you can bank on that. All right. Now, in May 1969, Cernan was the lunar module pilot of Apollo 10 which descended within a few nautical miles of the moon's surface. The mission demonstrated that the Apollo command, service, and lunar modules would perform as expected. In 2007, Cernan told a NASA publication, I kept telling Neil Armstrong that we painted a white line in the sky all the way down to the moon so he wouldn't get lost and had, all he had to do was land. Made it sort of easy for him is what he said. 
Now, little astronaut, playful, competitive banter, I suppose, but I want to say this. On behalf of every one of the more than 63,000 members of the Airline Pilots Association International, I want to thank you for being the shepherds of the sky and for painting that white line that guards us safely to our destinations every day. You do it every day, and I thank you for that. Thank you for being our brothers and sisters in labor, and thank you for never, ever being satisfied with what you know, for always learning more in classrooms, radar rooms, and in tower cabs, Air traffic controllers simply never let up in your pursuit of knowledge, and neither do airline pilots, neither do airline pilots. So together, we will do whatever it takes to keep our passengers, our crew, our community, our cargo safe. And I sincerely appreciate you having me here today and for being partners in training for life. Thank you very much, and enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you all.